One of the biggest questions I get when it comes to color coding is how to color code when you have 9 million kids in your caseload. Now, I'm being super facetious. None of us have caseloads that big, but sometimes it feels like our caseloads are that large. So I'm talking about caseloads that you're gonna have to double up on colors, you think, or you have caseloads of 20 kids or 15 kids, or you have a resource class and you're not sure how to color code in a resource setting or in an inclusion setting, I wanna help you with all of your color coding, everything, I guess, details, 411, I don't know. But we're gonna talk about it today. <laughs> when it comes to color coding, I'm talking about color coding everything. Your bins, your student IEP binders, maybe student binders that they have work in, um, bins or cups that they have supplies in. That's what I'm talking about color coding. So you can see all of my bins up here. This is my office closet. And I have all of these bins from Lakeshore. So I have always used the primary colors, but they also have the neon colors too. So I have, I have all of those colors. So I have 12 colors. But what do you do when you have more than 12 kids or maybe you don't wanna use the neon colors or you don't wanna use the primary colors or you only have can find white bins, or you can only find one color of a bin, what do you do then? Let's talk about what is color coded. This is a bin, it's from Lakeshore. This goes in every student desk. This is what they keep their headphones in. If they have fidgets of any type, it goes in here. They can keep their sight word pockets in here um, if that's where they're going. If not, they also have space in their bin here that they can put them. The student IEP binder, this goes behind my desk, and we'll take a closer look at this. They have bins that are all lined up on the wall. They have their names on them. And I can say, okay, Stephanie, go get your communication book out of your bin. They know to come over and grab their communication book. The colors of the communication book are color coded for the kids. This is what I send home every day with the parents. They have, for the parents, they have all the things they'll need in here. That's all the price tag on it. That's pretty funny. Anything they'll need, I can say, go get your reading glasses out. And it makes reading a little bit more fun. So anything color-coded is in there if they have token boards. This is also where we keep all of our student supplies. So glue sticks, glue sticks, pencils, scissors, markers, specific grippers if they need them. They're in their cups. So I can say, okay, Stephanie, go get your cup and bring it back to the table. And they can go grab the cup and then bring it back to the table so they have all of their supplies they need. And then at cleanup, they just put all of their supplies back in the cup and then put it back in the tray. Now you don't have to get the color-coded bins or the cups. You can use ice cube trays as book bins. They're fantastic. Or any other type of cup for this and then just use paper and tape it on with their name. Let me show you what I mean. This is Astro Bright's paper. I like to buy the 25 pack of different colors. This is actually two of them put together. 25 different colors that you can use for color coding. Stop it. Instead of having only six colors or 12 if you include the neon colors at Lakeshore, um, really good stuff has 12 colors of bins too. But instead of just having those 12 colors, you now have 25 colors. You can double up on the colors, which is what I have done. And you just put student names on the bins, the binders, their cups, whatever. Just use masking tape, like the Scotch mask. Is it called masking tape? Packers tape? Whatever it's called. You just use the clear packing tape. There it is. Clear packing tape. Put it over it. And identifying student names also works as a great IEP goal, and it's great for our students to be able to identify their names in addition to color. So you're practicing more than one skill. All right, Misty, but where do you find all of these colored binders? I'm so glad that you asked, Cowboy Delussy. <laughs> anyway, you don't have to use colored binders. You can grab white binders and use the Astro Brights paper as your slips in the front and the side on the spines, and you're good to go. Look, Misty, I am not about to buy a binder for every single one of my kids. Get real, I don't have the money or the room to store it all. Do you, boo? You don't need to buy binders for every single one of your kids. You can store them all in a larger binder, like a three inch binder. I'm gonna show you how.
You're going to print all of your covers on whichever colors you want and all of your spines and put them in. These are one inch binders. And then you're going to use the plastic sleeves on the inside. However many divider pages you print or edit to make for your binders is how many sleeves you're going to need. When it comes to resource or inclusion, you can print just a basic cover, put your spine in here. This is the confetti paper from Astro Brights from the same pack of paper. And then I just labeled them student A, but you could put your student names here, use all your different colors, and then keep everything you need, either hole punched and put it in here or put another page protector and slide everything you need into that student's color. Look at all these color options. You truly have so many options when it comes to color coding. Try and think outside of the box. It doesn't have to be done exactly how somebody else has done it. Make it work for you. So here you have your one inch colored binders in white with the Astro Brights paper. You have the colored binder with the color coded or you have your resource binder, your three inch binder with all of your students inside of one binder. What do you think? What questions do you have? What can I answer for you? Let me know here.